if I may, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I went about things and how I made a million or two, yeah? Because yeah. I, I, in 1977, I was so broke that, and in so much trouble, I was living in, under a false name. Uh, and this guy had said to me, So let's talk about why businesses fail, not just small businesses, all businesses, yeah? I've worked with huge businesses, the IBM, American Express, blah, 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 all over the world. And I've worked with small businesses and I've run my own small businesses, sometimes into the ground very quickly. Um, and it's all the same. It doesn't matter. Big people, just just bigger people making bigger mistakes that cost more money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Except when you're starting, it's bloody hard. And I started trying to, to run a business in my mid-20s when I was the creative director uh, of an agency in London uh, before most of you were born. And I failed miserably. Um, I haven't got time to talk about that. I'll talk to you a little bit about when I finally got it wrong. Or rather, when I finally got it right, I got it wrong several times. When I finally got it right. What, I, what happened with me was that um, I used to be, act as a freelance creative director. And, um, and I was constantly trying to think, what on earth, how on earth can I make some money? How on earth, that's serious money. Um, and I was in a pub in Knightsbridge when a, a bright young man said to me, he said, this direct marketing thing is getting quite big and you seem to know more about it than anyone else I've ever met. Maybe you should do something. And I should explain to you what direct marketing is. It's In those days, it was just seen as anything, any way, any way you sold to somebody directly. Yeah? So it was usually mail order. And now it's anything on the internet because everything on the internet is direct, yes. Yeah. So anything, when people talk about digital, for instance, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. Yeah. So I started a business. Um, and the first question I would like you to address yourself to when you consider building a business is a statement made by a brilliant, now no longer with us, uh, professor called Peter Drucker. Um, and he said, uh, there is only one source of profit in business. It is your customer. So if you want to succeed in business, the first thing you've got to remember is spend most of your time thinking about your customers. And what should you think about? You should think about uh, what you're going to do for your customers. Not what you do, but what you're going to do for your customers. Um, and the best definition I've ever heard of how you should consider going into business, what you should bear in mind is this. It's a phrase uh, by a man called, uh, uh, um, I can't even remember his name actually. He said, to whom are you offering what ultimate benefit? To whom are you offering what ultimate benefit? Um, by the ultimate benefit, it means not what you do. You might do all sorts of things. It means what is it going to do for your customer? What is it ultimately going to do for your customer? Yeah? So if you take Shaz, Shaz is an accountant who works a lot in the property field. And he could probably say to you, oh, I think I'm going to talk to you about how accountancy relates to the property field. He doesn't talk to you about that. He talks to you about what you're interested in. The ultimate benefit you're interested in is how can I make more money out of profit out of property without going raving mad? Yeah? That's the ultimate benefit. So first of all, think what is it that you can do that you know about that will offer the ultimate benefit to your prospects? And who are those people? Because you have to spend all your time thinking about who those people are. And sometimes, uh, if I may come in, Rick, is people kind of struggle with that. Uh, they either don't have 
clarity on their ideal customer profile because when you're going to speak to them or ask them, they, well, everybody's my customer. Anybody who wants to walk in or go onto my website and click this button three times and give me their credit card and has a pulse uh, uh, can have my goods uh, or my services or my products. Uh, and then they also struggle in demonstrating value or benefits. Uh, so any thoughts on that in terms of how people can gain more clarity on their ideal customer profile and how they can get better at communicating the benefits of what the end user gets? Well, you have to spend, you know, if I may, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I went about things and now I made a million or two, yeah? yeah. For the, I, in 1977, I was so broke that and in so much trouble, I was living in, under a false name. Uh, and this guy had said to me, oh, you should do something in direct marketing. And I noticed that direct marketing was doing very well. And I went into business with him and another guy who got fed up and left the pair of them. One of them made millions afterwards, um, so he was better off without me. Um, so I thought, uh, what are we going to offer? Uh, let's do some research. And what we did was we wrote two letters. Uh, and one was about one thing that we could have done because one of my partners and I were experts in international advertising. So we wrote one letter about international advertising and how we could help, and another one about direct marketing and how it could help. And the direct marketing one, which was four pages long, uh, we sent out 72 letters. That we, we got, I can't remember how many letters, we got 72 replies and 12 people wanted to do business with us. Yeah. Mm. Um, actually, the four-page letter was quite funny because a, a, an advertising creative director wrote back and said, nobody reads the four-page letter. By the way, uh, you have a grammatical error at the top of page three. Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. Um, so what we then did was um, got on the phone to these people and we got, we got business, yeah? And then we did lots and lots of things that other people don't do. And this is going back to your original question, why do people fail? The first people that reason they fail is they don't have a plan. Yeah? They don't write down a plan. I do not plan in my personal life. But <laughs> I did plan then. And how did I plan? <clears throat> I worked out who were our most likely prospects. We were offering direct marketing, so therefore our most likely prospects were people already doing it, mail order companies. So we approached mail order companies and we got one client, one very big client. And we did something, by the way, that people don't normally do. We charge much more than anyone else. That's always a good idea because you can always come down from a high price, but very difficult to go up from a low price. Right? So we got one customer. Obviously, the one about international marketing, that didn't work at all. Yeah. yeah. Now, the next thing you have to think about, okay, you've got a plan. You know who you're going for. You know, you've got to find out where do you get hold of them. And we used every single thing you can possibly use to try and reach people. We used direct mail. It was followed up on the telephone. We used to go out and make speeches. I used to go out and make speeches. Uh, we used to go and attend events. We did every single thing you can do. We ran advertisements. Oddly enough, most advertising agencies don't believe in advertising, but we did. Uh, so we did everything that you could possibly do to get business. Yeah? And we measured our results. And we became well known. Yeah? But having got a plan, you have to say Keep an eye on what's going on in the market. I don't care what kind of business you're going into. You need to keep an eye on what's going on in the market. And it can be a big market or a small market. And you have to think about what are you going to offer that's going to make people happier than your competitor offers. And it can be any kind of business. I'll give you an example. I used to live in a big house before my last divorce um, in Somerset. And I used to go and work in London in, in Mayfair. Uh, 
and I'd catch the train back and on the way back on a Friday we'd pass two fish and chip shops in Bridgewater and one always had a big queue outside it and the other one didn't and why you know, because the one that had a big queue outside it used to offer a lot more chips than the other one mm. they weren't any better in theory yeah what did it mean that they offered more a lot more chips they got more customers what did that mean it meant that their fish was fresher because they were selling more fish eventually the other business went broke so it can be a tiny little thing that makes the difference i'll give you another example a mail order company used to sell women's clothes and they used to when they sent the clothes out they would also send out a beautiful garment bag which they hadn't mentioned in their advertising so it was a lovely surprise so try and think of if you're looking at your, your what you're trying to do try and think of what you can offer that other people don't offer and it can sometimes be quite simple you know? so that's the next thing the next thing is having decided what you're going to do and it's working keep an eye on what's going on always keep an eye on your competition so i noticed that we noticed that new companies were suddenly getting interested in direct marketing big companies like coca-cola ibm they became clients of ours um and I, I thought oh we'll stop going after the mail order people because they know what they're doing <laughs> we'll start going after the big companies that don't have a clue and have lots of money yeah and so in no time at all from being flat none of us had a penny we were all desperately desperately broke when we started one of my partners his sole possessions were a clapped out volvo uh, which had one front seat missing and he used to wear a pinstripe jacket with a rip down the back <laughs> one pair of jeans and a pair of boots and that was it yeah yeah we were absolutely desperate but all of a sudden within relatively small period of time we were doing well and we started getting these big companies